it's really difficult to find great executives. Spirit Consulting helps organizations find all-star executives and hire the right one using work psychology so you can serve more customers and grow your business. To get a free quote, go to spiritmco.com. Enjoy the show. All right. Well, welcome back to the Virtuous Heroes podcast, where we inspire toxic work cultures to the type that, you know, people sit in meetings, they leave the meetings, go back to their desks and cry. (laughs) (laughs) It's just the opposite of that. We are definitely focused on building world champion cultures and loving everyone that we encounter, inspiring them to be their best selves. Today on the show, very excited to be able to uh, bring a good friend, Mary. We've had the opportunity to partner over the years uh, from a working relationship. So, so excited that you could be on the podcast and tell a little bit about your journey as well. Our first question always is, who are you? Thank you, Chris. It, it's been great. You and I have been friends for uh, quite a few years, and I appreciate you. My name is Mary LaFrancois, and who am I? You know, probably my favorite title that I love people to call me is grandma. That's been uh, the last five years. I've been, uh, I I have the privilege of being a grandma to to four. So I am, that's my favorite title, title, but I'm also a mom. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. You know, I'm a, it's interesting. I know you're a runner. I'm not, I'm a retired runner. Um, Mm -hmm. I have done my marathon and hung hung my uh, tennis shoes up or, or actually I threw them in the garbage. Um, (laughs) A true story. <laughs> uh, but during the day, I'm also an HR leader, an executive coach. I'm a supporter to, to many leaders in the health system that I work for. So that's a little bit about who I am. So uh, two follow-up <laughs> questions. What is the name of the health system in your role there? And then also La Francois, that's how you pronounce it? <laughs> Yes. Yes. You know, uh, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, I have the privilege to work for Art and Health Systems. That is a health system that is based in Nashville. However, the region that I'm in is in Tyler, Texas. So I've got the privilege to um, support the uh, team here in uh, Texas. And, you know, my husband it's my husband's uh, family name, and we said La Francois for many years. Mm-hmm. And uh, over the last several years, we decided to change it to La Francois because it is spelled that way, and it really is should be pronounced that way. So uh, that's we. I kind of have a new new identity. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think I was pronouncing it like La Francois for some time. So <laughs> way off, not even close. I- <laughs> I answer any way you need it. <laughs> there you go. Well, at least I can spell it correctly, so I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Um. So. For sure. So, can you tell us a little bit, Mary, how you got to the leadership position that you're in today? Yeah, for sure. So, I always had been in the human resources space. My whole career kind of fell into it. Uh, back in the the days when it was called uh, personnel. So I hate to age myself, but. Um, that's when I started and I got an opportunity in the mid 2000s. I was working as a director for a health system. It was the first time I had worked for a health system and was working in Madison, Wisconsin, actually at a health system and really wanted to continue to advance. So had the courage one day, got some bravery and went and talked to my boss about someday I'd like his job. And uh, he was very clear to me that he had no intentions of uh, going anywhere for quite some time, but he was very supportive of growing me and helping me figure out really what my next step would be. And so I happened to have an opportunity where a recruiter, not you, but a recruiter called me and uh, said uh, there was a great opportunity. Um, Would I be interested in throwing in my hat, Uh, which ended up being the the role that I ended up stepping into. And that was really a vice president position for a health system. So it was a really great opportunity. But, you know, looking back at my conversation with my leader at the time, he was the VP of HR. You know, it it does take courage. And, And, you know, I talk to people today and as I coach them about having the courage to know what you want. 
there, you know, being able to talk to people, it's okay to say to somebody, you know, I'd love to grow into your role. Will you help me do that? And people are afraid to say that. And, and I always wonder why. You know, um, but I suppose not everybody's comfortable with that conversation if you're a leader, but um, it's one thing that I am very comfortable talking about and was at the time um, being able to, you know, step up to the table and really say, yeah, this is what I want to do. So that's kind of how I um, fell into a vice president role and uh, have been doing that for about 15 years now where I've had the opportunity to work for a couple of health systems and uh, leading their HR space. So it's been, a, it's been a real treat and a real blessing for me to have this opportunity to use the skills that I, you know, went and learned through master programs, through everyday experience that I was able to um, step into a role like this. Yeah, the um, thank you for sharing that because I don't think we've ever talked about that previously on the podcast, specifically around I, I do like leaving virtuously. Um, yes, um, I know I've I might have even like wrote a post for Spirit Consulting around this, but you know it's interesting to me whenever I ask the question, you know, because as for those of you that don't know my day job. Uh, is you know I'm a I'm an executive search <laughs> professional, and uh, so we, you know we we help organizations hire all star executives. So frequently we have to you know talk through the reference portion of people making transitions, and yeah. I always ask like so what is your you know what is your boss going to serve as a reference, and have you guys had the conversation? It's actually very telling to me about their emotional like um, intelligence on on where, where that conversation sits, because it's like, yeah, I, I agree that like we in a virtuous organization and one that loves people and wants the best for them, we have to be focused on being able to grow and develop those that are under us. And, yeah. and you know, it is a little scary to like be thinking about, okay, well, you know, I'm building this person up and then they leave and then I've got to kind of start all over. But I kind of always go point to Zig Ziglar's quote, where it's, it's always better to, to train people and have them be promoted and leave you than to not train people and have them stay. Um, so, so yeah, just being able to like, from the leader's lens to be able to, you know, help those people develop and just gives you that much more capacity to be able to execute within your role. But then now looking at the person that's, you know, the, the, the direct report leading, looking upwards, um, they, I, like, as you said, yeah, I'm sure the first time you have that conversation, it's grossly scary. But as you've seen, like in your own career, is a beautiful yeah. opportunity to really like let your boss know that you want, you have those aspirations to continue to grow and progress. And then giving them the opportunity to fulfill that need um, where, you know, and 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 like i think the other thing that comes to mind is like you know there's op you know it's just it's life and so we don't want to be able to leave those conversations on the table and uh and therefore it's like i i feel like in in the most virtuous way to leave an organization is to then let your boss know have those conversations when it is that you're ready. So then that way they can also be able to build in the capacity that they need if they know that you are going to be leaving as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a real, you know, I think of it as a partnership. You know, how do, how do we partner together and how do, how do we, especially me as, as the leader now, how do I really help them get where they wanna go? And I've had a couple of my own employees say to me, Hey, I'd like your job. <laughs> so, you know, so we've talked about how, what skills do you need and how can we help you, you know, get there. And there have been couples that have left and gone somewhere else because it was their time to do that next step. Hmm. And that's a win for me because I got to watch them grow. Maybe it's not here on my team, but I've been able to watch them grow and it's, you know, 
I, I take a lot of pride and a lot of satisfaction out of that, watching that happen. Well, Mary, what are what are some of the things that you're the most passionate about these days? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> well, t- these days, really, it's about how do we help employees kind of feel, and I don't want to use the word settled, but really, um, really good about coming to work. There is so much noise around the great resignation about people leaving, the people just not being settled in the organization that they're working with. So, you know, my passion is really around how do, how do the things that I can influence help employees feel like they want to get up in the morning and come to work? How do I help the organization get to that place? So it's, I, I would say it's always been my passion for employees to be at work. I used to think I need to make them happy. And that, I don't think that way anymore. What I think is, how do I make environments for them to make that decision to be, want to come to work? And, you know, I've read a lot about how, you know, you can't make somebody happy, right? You know, they've got to make some choices. They got to make decisions that they want. You know, they've got to make that internally themselves. But I can help by influencing our environment. I can help by influencing our leaders to build relationships with their employees. I can build things that when they come to work, they feel safe. They feel that this is where they want to be. So I'm very passionate about that. I want people to wake up every day and be okay with going to work. Hmm. That would be, that makes my day. Have you been feeling unfulfilled? You want to be happy, but just continue to struggle. One of the best ways to experience joy is by caring for the homeless. A charity I've grown to love, River of Light, food rescues a million meals per year for the needy in Chicago. Imagine how that make you feel, knowing that you're helping feed children and veterans. To make a tax-deductible donation, visit riveralightchicago.org. Again, riveralightchicago.org. No one should go to bed hungry. So you, you gave us some of those about, you know, being able to create that, that ideal type of culture. Can you give us some of those? um, What do you think are some, some tangible tips that leaders can start to put in place to really be able to make, you know, get in employees uh, inspired and excited about coming to work every day? Yeah. So the first thing I would say is, first of all, listen to your employees. What do they want? So there, it's going to be different depending on, you know, your employee base, depending on your, your work environment, depending on the industry you're in. And there's a lot of factors. So you have to talk to your people. You got to find out what, what is going to make you get up in the morning and come here. It was interesting. I was just reading this weekend again, you know, it continues. It talks about employees don't want the, the gimmicks. They don't want the Starbucks cards. They don't want those kind of things. What they want is an opportunity to come to an environment where they can grow and learn and feel like they're making a difference. So if you are a leader today, first of all, go in and talk to your people. What, what do they want to do? Where do they want to grow? And what in, how did they describe how they can make a difference? And that's what you need to work on. So for me, I don't believe that there is really a one answer is going to fit every organization or every work team, anything like that. You know, I've got, <clears throat> I've got all kinds of variety of team members, whether you're talking ethnicity, whether you're talking age, whether you're talking, you know, education background, you know, just a variety of um, great people on the team. And you know, we've had to listen to what they want and we've split them into different teams. We let them kind of decide how, so that they can come back to the table to say, you know, here's, here's what's going to work for me. And here's what, 
you know, it's going to help me get up in the mornings. And so I would say, you know, make sure you know, know your people. Mm. Yeah, I love that. So ultimately what you're saying is it's it's not a one size, one strategy fits all <laughs> every organization, but mainly the, the the strategy there is to listen and to ask have the um the courage to ask the question, what is it that they actually want, and then be able to deliver upon that. Absolutely. You you've got a lot of noise around, you know, people wanting to work remote, but you also have some of our newer Um, employees coming into the workforce saying, listen, I've been remote in college for two years. I don't want to (laughs) sit at home in my, you know, my little apartment anymore either. So you really have to hear what they want so that you can, you can work through that. Awesome. Well, well, thank you for sharing in that way, Mary. This past weekend, uh, we, we didn't talk about this. I forgot that this was one of our our (laughs) items for the weekend. Was we we on Friday night? My godson stayed over, and me, Hannah, the boys, and and my godson, we all went to confession together as a family on Saturday. And uh, my confession on Saturday was that I'm that I'm prideful, that I am lazy, and that I'm judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> we did okay. talk about we did talk about the the lazy element. It was just like as we transition into the vices piece. I mean, that's definitely, you know, before I'm like, okay, air your dirty laundry out. I'm just going to be honest about where I'm at. And, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, just like that there are no TVs in monasteries and, and how I have found like in the season that, you know, work has been so intense with how quickly we've been growing that it is helpful to just like, you know, slip into that uh, like that bad habit of just putting on the TV after like everything's after dinner and just being able to sit there. But I, I don't feel like this is me being my best self and, or then it also is, cre- you know, I've gained a, a couple, a couple pounds from this remote opportunity. And then in addition to that, like, you know, my kids are nine and seven, so they want, they have all of this energy and they want dad to be going and going and going. Dad's like, oh, I just want to sit on the couch right now. So, uh, you know, that is a, that is what I feel like is a vice of just laziness that I'm kind of like been battling in the season and want to be able to, uh, you know, be better in that way. Um, and so that's why I set my own Lenten goal of exercising at least 20 minutes a day. Um, for the next 40 days. But just curious, what vices, Mary, that you've struggled with uh, or that you had to overcome or are presently working on overcoming in order to become the leader that you are today? Yeah. So a little bit of the opposite of yours. (laughs) I would say, you know, I've had the guilty um, of being kind of pedal to the metal, not relaxing, not, you know, pushing maybe too hard, and again, remembering that team members are in different spaces, team members have different, you know, ideas of, of how they're going to get through their day. And so being a hard charger has not always been to my benefit. And so it's just one of these things I have to work on. I still have that energy and still have that push but I'm more conscious of making sure I say things like, is that deadline reasonable? Mm. You know, <clears throat> versus the deadline's Friday and not really, you know, having a discussion about it. I really work hard at either having team members bring a deadline to the table or bringing it myself, bringing the deadline with the conversation around Do you think that's reasonable? Can we accomplish that? And being very open to changing that as needed. You know, I I know when I am probably pushing a little too hard, I will actually get comments from my team members saying things like, I'm worried about you. You know, you go too much. You never stop. You never ever break. And, And it makes me pause to go, okay, obviously I'm going too hard that it is even kind of alerting people that I need to, you know, relax a little bit. What I've learned is the truth is 
work is important, right? But it's also a balance that you have to do. You can't just do work constantly at high speeds. You really do need to balance. And I've had to, I've had to learn that. That's not, that's not easy for me. Hmm. So outside of the feedback loop that your employees were giving you, was there, was there other signs that like, oh, maybe it's time that I have to be able to pace myself? Yeah. You know, it's, <clears throat> um, you know, if I don't, some of it is, is more around if you don't make deadlines, you know, it, it's difficult. I like to, to achieve. You like to be, to be winners. So, you know, I've just had to, you know, Think about also personal balances, you know, making sure that my obituary doesn't just say that I've, I only worked, I did nothing else, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. making sure that I have a, you know, more of a balanced life and um, I really, really do, I have to work at that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, well, thank you for, for sharing in that way. And um yeah, I would guess I, as we were just talking about having a more balanced schedule, um, I was just thinking about, you know, like specifically, like as people, you know, because at the end of the day, I think these episodes are great for the opportunity for people to recognize like, hmm, like as people talk about some of the vices that, that they may have struggled with in their lives that our audience can say has that opportunity of revelation of saying like, Hey, is this something that I have, am I presently struggling with it? Or even thinking about that journey um, to overcome that in, in particular. So that's, that's why I was asking the question about like, were there some signs in particular that kind of like were, were dawning on you that hmm, maybe I do need to be more realistic within like the, the timelines that I'm setting for people or the deadlines that, that I'm either giving to myself or my teammates, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, probably not a ton additional signs because I'm a little blinded. This is a real blind spot for me. It's really when people make it tuned to me, even my daughter will say, even at home, you know, it's okay to sit down. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, I, I'm just wired. I'm just wired a certain way. And, but it's good to have people remind you. Hmm. Awesome. So now looking at the opposite uh, side of the coin, what virtues do you yeah. feel like you've mastered in your own uh, life or working towards mastering in your life? <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've had um, a few different experiences through work that have really given me a lot of hope. And um, change has been my life for the last probably good seven years. I've just had a lot of change and I have really learned to lean into change, like really embrace it. Like when change is, is, is really okay. I'm not one of those that, you know, kind of struggles with new. I, I really have a lot of hope and a lot of change that I'm comfortable with. And so it's, it's been good for me. Hmm. So, I mean, I think that, you know, in the middle of recording this, I, I know that we usually have gotten to this place where our episodes are going live, like within, you know, a couple of weeks of when we record them. Um, so obviously, realistically, you know, people in the podcast world understand that it's not like we're presently like, you know, recording and, and being live on this day. So uh, but so in the time of that, we're actually recording this, like, you know, Russia has been invading Ukraine. We're in the state of Illinois, at least we finally just got the mandate to to have masks be optional. But, you know, the reality of the situation is that, you know, we've been living in a pretty rough couple period of time where hope is just the exact opposite of what many people have been experiencing. And uh, so, so just curious as to like, how do you, I know you kind of mentioned that this is one of those things that you've been working on kind of like, uh, or, or this, this is something that you feel like you've been gifted within. Just curious, Mary, like what can other people do that don't feel that like they have the same amount of hope in their lives? Um, what, yeah, how, how do you cultivate hope? So, <clears throat> 
I've read this book in addition, but this is something I've also done myself, but it was called Coffee Self-Talk, where in the mornings you just start your day talk, talking to yourself in the positive frame, you know, about I'm good, I have hope, I am, I'm brave, you know, different things like that. And, you know, I would say that has just been a part of my life that I've been able to do where I can talk to myself in the positive. And I think if, if for anybody, think about all the great things and tell yourself that over and over every single morning when you get up and maybe every single night when you go to bed. And I will tell you, you start living it. You start feeling it. Your body feels positive. Your body feels that hope. Your body, that energy of the right place is there. So if I encourage anybody, wake up tomorrow morning and tell yourself, take five minutes and tell yourself all the good, all the positive, all the things that are right, and do it when you go to bed. It will change your life. You will just become a more positive person and you'll believe it because it's true. Well, uh, Mary, can I, can I take that to prayer? <laughs> you can, absolutely. Well, Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to connect today on the Virtuous Heroes podcast with Mary. Lord, uh, you had taught us in scriptures that it's possible for us to be able to airdrop gifts to one another. And so, Father, I just pray that Mary's hope, the way that she's intentionally focused on cultivating hope in her day to, to begin her day and to end her day, that, Lord, that you would pour that out upon people that are listening to this episode, that, that you would give us a supernatural ability to hope where in today's age, where maybe some, where it looks to be dark, that Lord, that you said that we would be your light into the world. And so Lord, we just pray that your disciples would continue to reflect your light into the world. And Father as well, I also pray that, that you would help us, that anyone that's listening to this episode and recognizing that they've been too rigid around time, like timelines and expectations of other people, that, that you would help uh, break that spirit off of people listening to this episode today, and that you would help us flow in your spirit, that we would lean into you, of the creator of all creation, and know that you've got a better plan, that we could have a plan overall, and that you work things all together for good. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to, of breaking off the spirit off of our listeners today and helping people to lean into you, Father. Um, we love you, Jesus, with all of our hearts, and we thank you for the opportunity to inspire virtuous living. Mary, um, curious, how can people get a hold of you or what your company yeah. is doing? Right. So I'd love for you to check out our website. That's uthet.com. It's called UT Health East Texas is the region that I'm in. So I'd love for you to uh, check out our organization. Um, if you're a nurse, feel free to apply. We'll, <laughs> we would love to have you. Uh, my personal information is Mary Dot, and it's LaFrancois at U-T-H-E-T dot com. And uh, you can reach me anytime you want. I'd love it. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for watching us on the Virtuous Heroes podcast, where we inspire virtuous leadership Mary, thank you so much for your witness and testimonial to inspire other peoples to uh, lead virtuously and really look forward to continuing the dialogue with you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Chris here. Hope you enjoyed the episode where we discussed all things going bald. <laughs> Just joking. If you enjoyed the episode and the podcast, will you please subscribe on YouTube or Apple Podcasts or Spotify? Or you could also share it with a friend. That would be tubular. I hope you have an awesome day.